Twilana, it is so significant that, uh, and, and the reason this store was targeted, uh, this store in particular was celebrated a decade or more ago when it was opened up as a major victory for the east side of Buffalo and the African American community to address what had been a food desert. And uh, that, that is one of the reasons the alleged gunman targeted this community in this area because uh, they, he knew that it was, while it was a soft target, uh, it was a target that would have uh, an incredible and a tragic impact. And uh, it, so it's, it, it's very moving that the president and the first lady are now ma making their way to the site of that tragedy. We see them hand in hand making their ways and uh, walking by a first makeshift memorial outside the tops right there, not speaking with anyone. But now it appears that they're bending down the memorial as well, possibly laying flowers. Uh, I believe the First Lady had a bouquet in her hand and uh, just appears to have laid it down beside at uh, one of the many makeshift memorials that have been uh, forming over the last three days outside of the Jefferson Avenue Top Store. What are you seeing, yeah, Twilon? Just, just to put this into perspective here, they're at the largest memorial that's here. There's one on every corner of Jefferson and Laurel and the street around it. There are several pop-ups, there's several flowers, notes, candles. We've had people from the community just out here to observe, to make sure that their voices are heard and that everyone understands just how big of an impact this has on the community because it is so incredibly important that people understand that this was a community fixture that was ripped away from them. People are never going to be able to go to this store again without thinking of what happened here on Saturday. We see with the president and the first lady now laying flowers at the scene, Erie County Executive Mark Polencar's Buffalo Mayor Byron Brown. We saw uh, Common Council President Pastor Darius Pridgen now also them speaking with the President and First Lady right now. Senator Charles Schumer, Senator Kirsten Gillibrand, Congressman Brian Higgins all on Air Force One with the President and First Lady this morning. And if I my if my view serves me right, I believe the Attorney General Letitia James is there as well. And Governor Kathy Hochul as well in town. They're meeting there at the tops. They laid flowers on the ground at the growing memorial there for the 10 victims who were killed, the three others who were shot. They'll be here for a short time, not expected to make any public announcement here at tops. But then they'll make their way to the Delavan Grider Community Center, where it's expected that the President and First Lady will have private meetings with the victims' families and with members of law enforcement, not in the view of the public, not in the view of our cameras, but meeting privately. And we're told at approximately one o'clock, the president will make public remarks to the people of Buffalo and Western New York and to the people of the United States of America, likely carried live on network news his views about what happened here in our community, an alleged targeted racist act of violence, and his views on calling on Congress to take action to keep what he says weapons of war off of our streets and out of the hands of criminals and people who have a serious mental illness that makes them a danger to themselves or others. And speaking of which, uh, we are going to bring in Attorney John Elmore into the conversation right now. First off, uh, Mr. Elmore, describe your, your feelings and your emotions at seeing the president, the first lady, and that entire delegation at the scene of such a tragedy that struck this community. Well, first of all, my immediate reaction is, is that the people in that community feel like somebody's cares. A, a community that has been crying out for economic health, uh, for for better jobs, for better housing, for years and years and years. Um, and 
and for the president to come here and the nation to look at it, um, I, th I think gives the community some hope. And right now, you know, people have been on their knees praying, hugging each other, looking for each other for support. And, and the fact that President Biden is here and, and uh, his, the First Lady Jill Biden, Biden is here gives them, gives them hope. Yeah, and obviously, I mean, um, Pastor Nicholas mentioned that this is a community that feels neglected, forgotten about, ignored, and now targeted after Saturday. Um, do you think, I mean, there was a lot of, a lot of pain and frustration and, and out and out anger uh, at that, the scene of the top store among the people in that, that neighborhood uh, on Sunday and in the days afterward. Do you think that this visit will, will start the healing process or do you think that people will say, okay, this is a photo op, we need things to change immediately? I, I think that it's more than a photo opportunity. Um, there's a lot of legislation that needs to be made uh, at the state level as well as in the um, national level when it comes to gun control. Um, and, and also um, uh, civilly, um, I, I think that uh, federally there should be, be legislation which would allow lawsuits uh, against mon gun manufacturers for uh, not for net for not for allowing and marketing guns for sport uh, to, that are actually weapons of mass destruction um, new york state recently amended uh, through the consumer protection act some some new laws that allow uh, private individuals to sue gun manufacturers for the negligent sale uh, the negligent marketing of of, uh, uh, of guns, and, and that should be federally. Uh, we have guns coming into Buffalo because we don't have, uh, they're coming into Buffalo because there are weaker gun laws in other states. Um, there should be uniform gun laws across the, the station because, you know, the east side of Buffalo, it, it is just so easy. Anybody can get a gun. Uh, teenagers have guns. And, and, and obviously this was a victim, I mean, this incident was a victim of a white supremacy, supremacists targeting this neighborhood, uh, but the neighborhood has also uh, been plagued by violence for years and years, and, and, and the same groups uh, that are there wrapping their rounds around the people um, every day uh, now feel good and comforted that Washington uh, is here to provide some type of assistance. Yeah, I mean, there are so many layers to this onion when you start unpeeling it. I mean, the gun control issue is, is certainly important, but also one of the reasons he targeted this particular tops in this particular community is the, the fact that segregation in Buffalo is still a real thing. Buffalo is probably uh, the most, one of the most segregated cities uh, in, in the United States. Um, if you go up Main Street, uh, the east side of Buffalo is predominantly African American, uh, and the west side of Main Street uh, is predominantly white. And then if you look at the suburban areas, uh, it's even more segregated. And, and, so you, and you see a huge disparity in, in, in education because you get a higher, much higher quality education if you're fortunate enough to go to a suburban, suburban school than, than if you go to an, an inner city Buffalo public school. Yeah.